Well, hello people, and welcome back to part 84 of Orchid Bay, our vanilla city skylines build. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. And I just loaded up and can't stop staring at this station. <laughs> it's just easily, I think, maybe, I don't know, let's decide in the comments. This is probably top three assets from kind of official packs and DLCs, I think, isn't it? Let me know if there's an asset that, that beats this, because it's just... It's just gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely love it. Anyway, we could sit here all episode and watch the Metro Plaza. Thank you for enjoying the Metro Makeover last episode. That video did really well, so always nice to see an episode this late into the series still get so much love, so thank you so much. And then what we are going to do today is actually um, the Country Estate build um, of Orchid Bay. Now, we did this in New Bjork, uh, obviously quite, quite a while ago now, probably more than a year ago we did this. Um, I'll leave some cinematics above it on the screen. But it was a really nice way to use uh, some seaside resort stuff. And that's what I want to use today. Because obviously in Orchid Bay, I'm trying to use as many of the unique buildings as we possibly can. And there's a prime spot here, um, just off of the Bait Plateau, actually named after our beautiful uh, Patreon subscriber, Bait ZT. And it's fertile land, so we can get some farming in here. So I think kind of an old country estate, maybe a bit of an older plantation. That does have some farming on site, some botanical gardens, but generally kind of luxurious. Very rich people vibes living up here, okay? So this little plateau, I think, is going to be perfect for it. So we're just outside of Carol here. Car factory's over there. Denise is over this side. And we've got the Kaka cabins and camping nature reserve over here. And of course, Bait Plateau, which we just looked at. So let's first of all um, kind of set up the... The design of the central estate i think so we'll manscape the forest away at least for a little bit and um, we will leave a little bit of a tree line between the train line and today's build so we do have some pretty nice views here so i think what i'd like to do is set up the estate first so let's dive into seaside resorts now we've still got quite a few of these assets left and there's hotel lawrence so i think we'll set up multiple different parts of the estate i think so I think the, the largest one we've got is going to be the Ocean View Hotel, isn't it? It's kind of the, the dominant asset, if you like. Um, Isleworth Gardens is also pretty big. But uh, there's a, a selection anyway, isn't there? So let's get set up a road frame. Now, I actually live near one of these country estates in real life, and um, they're very big. Also quite associated with farming as well. So... The viewpoint I think I'd like it to respect, I think is the country view across kind of rural Orchid Bay rather than facing it towards metropolitan Orchid Bay over this way if we like. So let's set up things to kind of start off here, okay? So let's have a big holding frame here. Something like that. And then let's set up our key asset. So I'd like this to be, I think probably, the Ocean View Hotel as our meat and potatoes, if you like. So I set up some symmetry out the front. We've got 100 and then 100 here. And the distance between there is 200. So we'll do a curve to meet there in the middle at 140. That should be fine. And then we'll have this as the entrance into our country estate here. So it's going to meander up from this way. So we'll probably use... The road with wide sidewalks, I think. I do want to have a tree lining, maybe. I think tree lining's a little fancier, isn't it? Let's have this, and then we'll have it devolve into them um, dirt road as we get further into the um, establishment, if you like. So, let's set up a guide road here. And we'll curve into this at a somewhat sensible angle, hopefully. So, I'd like to match the similar style buildings in with each other. So to have the red buildings over this way. Now we do also have the billions available, which we haven't used yet. Now these, I didn't realize actually until I was planning this episode out, that these don't need to be placed on a shoreline. And I thought they did. I thought they were kind of waterbound assets. But I think we can certainly pair it with these star buildings and have it kind of occupy a nice viewpoint over this way i think is an idea to run with so let's explore it together shall we 
Right, we'll bring in some roots. Let's go ahead and grab this one up here and do the same. This one as well. So I'd like the Lawrence Hotel to accompany the Ocean View Hotel. Totally ignoring the fact that they are hotels here. Having just said that, I've just remembered there are some fancier hotels in here, aren't there? Although we don't have them unlocked in Orchid Bay. I was thinking maybe the castle. The Heritage Hotel. Might be quite cool. I wonder if we actually bring in the castle monument across Orchid Bay. Could do it on one of the mountain top. We'll have to wait and see. See if we've got the nodes <laughs> before we start thinking about all the builds. Yeah, so let's box this in so we're all happy. And there's plenty of detail soon here with vanilla props. That would be quite nice, I think. So really want to align this pavilion with the back end of the hotel, which I think I'm actually just going to draw out some guidelines to help with that. So let's go from here. And don't forget, if you are missing Seaside Resort, you can get it down at Instant Gaming below. It does help support the channel. Now, that is interesting, isn't it? We can actually keep that connected with the road like that, which is actually tremendously helpful. Um, so if I wanted to dig away at this cliff now and just export or well, expose the um, kind of support trusses of that pavilion, is it convinced? I don't want to do it too much because I think it'll look a little, I guess, unstable, I guess, but... I think we can make it part of the estate and certainly to respect and what would hopefully be a very nice view if we can clip inside the building to um enjoy the view from the balcony not too bad that is it nice view of the countryside there yes please i think we'll get with that i don't mind that at all i think to further blend it in and um, we just want to go ahead and stick uh, some dirt paths with it how far can we clip in before it becomes unhappy? Something like that. And then if we come onto our angle snaps, we can then do plenty of detail around the back to develop gardens through here. Um, some of our part life props will come in tremendously useful, such as gazebos and whatnot for the elite upper class kind of tweed brigade of Orchid Bay, if you like to enjoy a bit of time in the sun. Very nice indeed. No, that's not a bad combination. Of course, it wants a little bit of detail and fleshing out, but I don't mind it at all. It's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, so I set up some further parts of the estate. We've also got some more buildings to use here as well. Uh, so we've got the Abbott Hotel. Um, I wouldn't mind having this actually. So on the estate where I live, they have um, these lodges on the gates to the estate that are kind of essentially what used to be gatehouses, but they've since been converted into kind of somewhat nicer usually kind of private rented accommodation at least in the situation i've seen them before so that's what i'd like to do maybe with the abbott hotel kind of treat it as though maybe it was once upon time the gatehouse or the property but obviously that kind of security is no longer needed anymore so it's just been turned into a private rental perhaps and we can have this on the way in uh, in terms of the tree we want lining into it, um, I wouldn't mind, yeah, I think kind of live oaks is probably the, the nicest, but they don't play very well on this road, do they? Yeah, they get, they really clip the cars as they come through. Uh, and then again, it's not, well, that's, that's a little bit dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> I guess. I don't know, there's something about a live oak lined road that I quite enjoy. I just wish they weren't so frequent, maybe. Maybe like every other live oak would be probably a little bit better, wouldn't it? But uh, either way, I'm digressing. Right, let's carry on pairing up some of our assets together. So I think what we will do here, actually, just as we begin to map out the rest of the facility, is let's leave every asset we have left available to use here. So then there is one more pavilion here, but I think we won't do two on the same area. We'll, we'll place that somewhere else, probably along the coast somewhere at some point. But uh, this does leave us with a few more assets to use together, doesn't it? So this one's also a pretty of eye drawing asset isn't it and um, why don't we have this almost as we could treat this perhaps as if it was maybe an older station building partnered with the historical train station which would be quite appropriate and um, well, we do have the power line running through here which i think i might actually amend um because plans have changed over here since we initially drew this out so we'll send that somewhere else at some point uh, but i'd love to explore the idea of a Older station building that you can see from Bait Plateau, but can't access it. 
Let's turn our road guideline here, and I'd like to snap to this one ideally. There we go. So we'll have that there, and then we'll feed up some feeder roads to hold the asset we want to use, possibly about there. I think don't want it too close to the station. I think we'll go with... And let's have a look at the station. It's kind of got a grey gray roof to it, hasn't it? I guess this one is the biggest match to it, isn't it? So hopefully you will sit centrally. Yes, you will. Absolutely delicious. So you can imagine, you know, maybe at some point the historical train station was part of the estate, but as the estate became privatised or just, you know, not open to the public anymore, then the station was locked off here. I don't mind that at all, I think. So you can have that there. So if you're in the Bait Plateau, you can kind of see the remnants of the old kind of historical country estate here. So if you're on the platform, you can see it too. Definitely blends in with the same vibes and textures, I think, doesn't it? Quite nice. So, uh, we'll give this another boxing in as well. Have it there. Pretty similar shape on both assets, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's fine. Uh, and then we'll have this one come down. Connect into the wider estate. So we have Miss CS2's road tools. I'd love to bring <laughs> a road out from here, but that's okay. And we can maybe do that from here. So I did mention like some farming industry in here as well. Now, since we've got the old... Um, farming area here. That's already pretty much over this area, isn't it? Right, we'll drag this over just so we can use it and don't need to place another building. Now let's have a look at some of our farm stuff. And I don't just want to use this area for more fertile land farming because we've done kind of three significant farms in the city already, so I think another one would be pretty boring. But I think if we were to use it as a farming DLC, possibly with some small crop fields that I'd love to have occupy this space here. Why don't we go with... Yeah, let's have a look at our options. We've got small fruit and small cropper. We're with the, the choice here, aren't they? I think corn probably the least appropriate. I guess cotton would probably be the most appropriate crop, wouldn't it? In terms of the fruit, these guys don't really... Then again, having some orange groves, I think, on the estate might be quite nice, mightn't it? I think we'll go with that then. Let's do the fruit fields instead. So we're doing apple orchids, orange groves. It doesn't really matter, does it really? It's a very slight <laughs> change. Aesthetic in the tree, which is fine. Uh, so that'll be 180 from this point. So let's do like 182 there. Set it up on this one. We'll have a couple of those back to back. Make sure we maintain the orange vibe. We'll have this over. So maybe it's still a little bit of a a working element to the country estate here. Um, I'd love to partner a building with this as well. Why don't we have this one? Yeah, Chasm Hotel. Kind of fits perfectly in there, doesn't it? And oh, I know it's symmetrical right now, but I think I'd actually love to um, knock it back another tile. Yeah, so I just want a tile space, I think, between the two fields. And then this way we can run some... Uh, Pathways through it as if it's access for workers and whatnot. In around lots of dirt paths today. Although, unfortunately, this is going to be a build that eats a fair bit of nodes, but it'll be worth it, I think. Cool. But now this here, go ahead and throw up some more orange fields here. Um, the warehouses or the greenhouses are. A little too industrial looking, to be totally honest. Um, I wouldn't mind a greenhouse here, but that's just, it's too, like, industrial, sort of modern farming vibe, isn't it? Cool, so let's do two more sets of orange groves. There we go. Uh, and then, I guess we could also do the botanical garden here as well, couldn't we? That would be an appropriate asset. I don't think I'm neglecting anything either. Yeah, I think biodome and vertical farm, everything's a little too modern, I think, for the vibe I'm after. But with that in mind, then, let's see if we can accommodate uh, the vanilla botanical garden. Somewhere about there. And I think that way we can um, link all our fields 
back in and around it. And I guess we might as well move everything over one tile, haven't we? And it'll all sit a little bit nicer together. Cool. And very detailable again during our time lapse, of course. Just a little bit of a, a working plantation, I suppose, on the estate. Might be quite nice. Could also be a hobby, I suppose. But I don't hate that there either. It's another part of the estate established, isn't it? Uh, bring in this connection here as well. I think the Hotel Fisk is also pretty impressive, isn't it? So I think we might actually change the configuration of the road here. And do another kind of fairly landscaped garden design here with the dirt road. So we could mimic this. That's another 360 from point to point. Which again, if we're starting to kind of fall off of the plateau here, aren't we? Yeah, it starts to slope down there. Which I don't mind. We could actually do another viewpoint from here. Especially if we're kind of sloping down. There's a really nice view over there, isn't there, with all the hills? Probably better than that view, actually. <laughs> now I've seen it. So let's just extend the plateau out a little bit where the estate is just kind of sat on. And we'll have this go 360 again like the other one. Or its curves kind of start up. So let's do kind of 140, wasn't it? That should be the same shape mimic, I think. Again, just push that up a little bit more. Now we can have this one sat at the opposite end, which won't quite go centrally, which will annoy me. Will another one of them do it? Yeah, this this one will. Okay. Then we can have that. Let's draw up some further extension roads and see if we can accommodate some more of these buildings. And this one. I wouldn't mind having here too. And how about we have this one in the middle of the estate there and then this one i think we might save one of them to pair with the extra pavilion we have left over and that might be quite nice cool and then this gives us the layout for our estate here that's going to connect in quite nicely there and i reckon we'll probably bring this one down too connect in there and that gives us the boundaries for the estate here i think doesn't it i'm pretty happy with that and lots of rocks to get under here as well. We're really detailed at the cliff edges here today to really kind of accentuate the I guess kind of layer of height that the old estate slash plantation is on, I suppose. And around here. Cool. But otherwise, that's all our assets placed down. Uh, there's a ton of landscaping to do. We're going to do a ton of wild hedge designs. Lots of roadies as well. Might even bring some palms in here too. I do like a palm in Orchid Bay. But we don't upset the palm, please, though. And big forest and fencing around to bring around the estate to give it that real kind of private, kind of posh vibe, I suppose. But either way, let's do some detailing and then we'll be right back.
Okay, guys, let's have a little look around Orchid Bay Country Estate, shall we? So, uh, up and against our kind of, I guess, old station house, it might have been. You can kind of see where the old pathways were uh, down toward the station over here. Uh, we just dropped in some palms, and again, there's a deep little palm plantation over here as well. Uh, which is quite on brand with the botanical garden here. Imagine some maintenance and perhaps other, I guess, flora research goes on. I'm not a botanical scientist, <laughs> clearly so. But you can definitely play with the vibes, and these areas always turn into such uh, unique builds, and seaside resorts lend itself uh, so nice to it. But there's a ton of hedge lining, as you would have seen. The, the lining here is essentially hedge lining. The detail in time lapse <laughs> is literally everywhere. It also dropped in a forestry area uh, from over there. We have a forestry area here because I really wanted some of the saplings. Perhaps you know this is where kind of staff will tend to them during their sapling stage before they're moved on to the main plantation over here near the botanical garden. So a little bit of forest industry over here. And I really like how all this sits at the uh, foreground of the big country house up here as well. Uh, toward this side. Also dropped in some of the farm maintenance buildings as well. Quite appropriate here just for you know, general tool storage for what goes on for maintaining very heavily landscaped grounds like this. Uh, at the top of our other country house over here, we have a little viewing platform, which is getting some really nice views. People enjoying the uh, very western peaks of Orchid Bay really nice here. You can even see tips of the regional airport and the oil refinery. Uh, the golf course is way over there as well. And that is the... Paper factory, I think, is it? Oh no, that's the that's the port mill. The paper factory is behind it. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like uh, one building from all the way over there, doesn't it? Uh, but either way, the point being, more nice views with uh, roadies and gazebos and more exotic kind of foreign trees over here, all for exploring and just strolling the country grounds, maybe taking a tour of the old house and whatnot. Uh, over here again, we've just mimicked the same design we had and um, out to the end of this one over here. And then do allowing some actual open green space to appear as well. And um, there's lots of landscape in here, so I think just some green grass can be quite welcome. I got a little bit of a fence boundary around our orange plantation here. Looks like a little hedge maze through here too. I was going to use the part life maze uh, hedge mazes, but the well the part life hedge to make a maze rather. But they always don't really line up properly. And placing them by hand would have taken bloody ages. So <laughs> I wasn't going to do that. Uh, but it's a pretty simple maze, so you've got to do is walk down here. But uh, there are little kind of dead ends you can walk down here and whatnot. So it's always fun to kind of be more creative with plants and whatnot in City Skyline. So uh, just a little wild hedge maze to fill one of the boundaries here. And then more gazebos. Also got some park life area action going on over here as well. So we can place park assets down on the pathways in the grounds of the house. Uh, and then over here, just more tree lining against the edge of the estate before we did drop in. Just some more wild rock and the bush gardens over this way with a riding stable over here as well which felt quite appropriate um, for the grounds but not an asset we use um overly often here is it it's uh see the woman sort of playing i guess tetherball with the horse it looks like she's doing here doesn't it or swinging it around on the road you know, is the horse running or is she swinging the horse around it's the uh <laughs> it's just the eternal question isn't it uh, and then our main kind of country manor up here as well sits so really nice with the path and all the roadies out the front and the HGV <laughs> driving past as well. Uh, and then little landscape gardens over here. Um, fountains, benches, gazebos, more exotic trees and pathways uh, leading up to the staircases where it makes sense. And then we do have our main pavilion up here as well, which now has really nice views um, across the country of Orchid Bay if we can line our camera up to not be an absolute nightmare hopefully either way you can get a sense of the view here right <laughs> this uh looking out over rural orchid bay and a nice way to use the asset which i think is really intended for being on the coastline isn't it but you can place them away uh, from the coast which is something i hadn't really realized before but nice to blend it into the red roof houses over here and then outside the botanical garden we do have some concrete pathway which is nice to see the visitors of the country estate getting use over here as well. Uh, we just dropped in some visitor amenities, a cafe, some toilets, a little kind of giant over the size sort of chess park for people to enjoy. Man, do you find some stuff like this on Osher Country Estates? If anyone's ever been to the Lake District, the lakes is littered with places like this. 
they are quite interesting places to visit. So if you ever find yourself in the Lake District, definitely make time to kind of visit um, an old country house and hall. Uh, they're pretty interesting to go to. And then we've got lots of these big hedges over here as well uh, to line the pathway. And then there is also a farm maintenance building out here again, just as a little bit of admin and maintenance for sort of estate workers where tools and you know, gas is stored and whatnot away from kind of the prying eyes of the visitors. But then it's a really unique build. Um, I definitely recommend playing with seaside results like this if you haven't already. Um, it always leads to kind of more interesting designs, I think. And there's endless possibilities you can do. Again, we've done one of these in New Bioke as well. If you haven't seen it, uh, I definitely recommend uh, that you do indeed uh, check it out. Otherwise, let's thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, likes, comps, and shares below really do help the channel to grow. And if you found yourself having fun at any point today and would like to get a little bit more egg in your life, maybe consider supporting the Overcharged Egg Patreon. It's linked down below. There's podcasts and early access and previews and polls on there for you to get involved with, should you so wish. And there's always the link down below to Instant Gaming as well which does help support the channel, and you get a nice cheap game in return for it as well. So check it out if you haven't already. Otherwise, I'll shut up and leave it there. Please do enjoy the cinematics, but let's thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.